during assembly, keep the drill in position with the boring shaft in the chuck as much as possible. This keeps it positioned during the tack welding process to prevent some of the binding. Adjust the position of your carbide cutter. Don't be impatient. Don't take more than a 32nd of an inch off absolute max, preferably less. And then you're ready to set her up. The Velcro strap sets your trigger on your drill and you're ready to start boring. Feed very, very slowly with very little pressure. Wait a minute. Go ahead. Spray WD-40 where you're going to bore. On the other side too. And then you should be ready to start boring. Feed slowly. Gently. Be very patient. Maybe, uh, be very slowly. Finesse it in the hole. Here we're boring with the cobalt cutter first. We're going to switch to a carbide cutter after this is done. We're going to switch to a carbide cutter after using the cobalt cutter to take off the high spots. Just take a slight skim cut with the cobalt cutter and then move on to the carbide. Cobalt tends to wear down where the carbide is a little bit more brittle. Q88 line boring system. Step one, insert the cones into the side frames, set up the bearings in position, and tack weld them in place. See the standoffs are being tech weld we're tech welded here after everything is assembled. Then the boring bar can be slid out and the cones easily removed. And then the boring bar could be slid back through with the secondary bearing installed on the inside. This bearing prevents excess vibration. And that bearing will be tack welded on the inside. There you have it. Tack weld the bearings in position to support the boring shaft. Without an extra bearing on the inside, you'd have excess vibration. All right, install the drill into the drill press adapter. Variable speed Milwaukee drill. The trigger will be held on with a Velcro strap. We have a lining up problem here. Any alignment problem can be cured by loosening the bearings and retightening them in position. This will move everything just an ever so slight amount, which when you bore it will all come out just fine.
finesse to holding that handle. Don't push too hard. Let the cutter do the work. Making chips. Okay, he's taking a cut at a higher speed RPM. That seems to be a bit fast. The carbide, this is incredibly slow. <laughs> is it? Oh, yeah. Good. It came through. How's the cutter look? Not too bad. I mean, it, it chipped a little bit. Probably Just need a little be, bit. Need to be sharpened. Okay. Or I don't know how they're gonna. Measuring from the tip of the carbide to the back side of the boring bar. Set his carbide cutting tool height for the next cut. 244. Now we take our second, or actually third pass through. The first time was with the cobalt cutter. First time we took a shallow pass with carbide. Now we're taking another pass with the carbide. Only this time we're going deeper. Increasing the depth of our cut by less than the 32nd of an inch each time. For more WD 40. Lots of WD 40. Carbide cutter is making its way through the hole. Controls the manual feed, variable speed Milwaukee drill, the Velcro controls the speed, got bearing right here, a bearing there, a bearing on the other side, and a bearing at this end. More information about the Q88 portable line boring equipment from American Machine Tools Company. Call 3773-334-5000. Three, 773-334-5000. And there's our hole. We got the grass. Oh, nice and smooth and beautiful. That's because it used WD-40. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's the Q88 line boring equipment from American Machine Tools Company, 773-334-5000.